Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be talking about the newborn hemolytic diseases that you need to know for step one. If you guys don't know, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash madmedicine, you can find all of our hemoc videos in a curated playlist for you guys. And while you're there, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel because we're posting brand new videos regularly. With that being said, let's talk about blood groups. We made a video previously on our YouTube channel where we talked about blood groups and what they're composed of. So go ahead and check that out on the playlist. But essentially, the gist is that we have red blood cells uh, that have different surface markers and depending on the surface markers we can classify people uh, into certain blood group categories. Now the two main types that you need to know for step one are the ABO and the RH blood group uh, classifications and together you see the A positive, A minus or A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive, AB negative, O positive, O negative classifications. These classifications use both the ABO and the RH subgroups. Now the this chart is from our previous video. We explained this chart in depth in the previous video, so go check it out. But essentially, you see that because of uh, the certain blood group you have, you're going to have specific surface antigens, and you're also going to have specific antibodies in the plasma, usually to the other blood group subtypes. In the case of AB and ABO, all these subgroups are going to have uh, specific uh, plasma antibodies, except for AB positive. AB positive is going to have no plasma antibodies. Now, if you do not transfuse the proper blood groups to a person, you can cause inflammation, coagulation, and many other issues. So it's very important to match blood groups based off of the surface markers when you are transfusing patients. Now that we've talked about that, let's talk about the hemolytic diseases of the newborns. This is also known as erythroblastosis fatalis, right? That makes sense because the erythrocytes or the red blood cells, blastosis are blowing up, right, uh, in the fetus. So you have hemo hemolysis of red blood cells in newborns. There are two main types. You have the RH hemolytic disease and the ABO hemolytic disease. And the way I remembered it is that for step one, you have the ABO classification and you have the RH classification of blood groups and if there's anything wrong that occurs in these red blood groups uh, you're going to see this in the uh, hemolytic newborn diseases therefore there are two main types you have the RH hemolytic newborn disease and the ABO hemolytic disease one thing to remember, very high yield, is that the hemolytic disease for RH, the RH hemolytic disease, is more dangerous than the ABO. So let's just write that here. It is more dangerous. All right. So just, and we're going to talk about why it's more dangerous specifically. It's because of the effects it has on the fetus. So with that being said, let's talk about the RH hemolytic disease. This is caused by in utero maternal blood exchange with the fetus. So when there is a fetus, uh, the blood is usually blocked off by the placenta. But if fetal blood and maternal blood mix, you can see RH hemolytic disease. The usual presentation, actually the, the, the only presentation you're going to see this is in, is going to be an RH negative mother, a mother who does not have the RH transmembrane protein on the red blood cell, and a RH positive fetus, a fetus who does have that uh, transmembrane protein. Now the mechanism is very unique, it's very important to understand. In the first pregnancy, nothing is going to happen to the baby. And the reason why is that the RH mother is going to first get exposed to the RH positive fetus uh, via the blood mixing in the pregnancy. And this exposure is then going to lead to the anti-D IgG. The anti-D IgG is in uh, an I in excuse me, the anti-D IgG is an antibody for the RH positive factor. So when the first pregnancy occurs and there's mixing of the blood, the mother is going to develop the, this antibody to RH positive blood. Now, in subsequent pregnancies, the mother's white blood cells are going to attack the fetus because the anti-D IgG can actually cross the placenta. It can coat the fetus, and the white blood cells are then going to attack the fetus. And children for this are usually screened for RH positive via the Coombs test. And we've talked about the Coombs test in previous videos, so you guys can go check that out. Uh, but essentially, that's what's happening. So the presentation in this case is going to be a patient, a baby, who presents with jaundice within 24 hours of birth, which is very, very important. Cernicterus might also be present. This is due to the increased bilirubin that's occurring due to the hemolysis. 
you will also see a mild hemolytic anemia, but in very severe cases of this disease, in very, very severe cases, they will present with high drops fatalis. It will just be an abortion essentially that occurs, okay? So that is the severe presentation. Now there luckily is a treatment and that treatment is called Rogam. Rogam is very important. This is very high yield, something you should definitely know for step one. It is an IgG that coats the maternal anti-D IgG and fetal red blood cells to clear them from circulation and prevent the development of the, the symptoms. Essentially, what ends up happening is usually this is, let's say this is the maternal, uh, sorry, this is the maternal IgG. It is going to bind to the uh, it is going to bind to the fetal red blood cell like this. Okay, but if you give Rogam, what Rogam will do is instead of leaving this IgG exposed, anti D IgG IgG, aka Rogam, is then going to come and then bind even more. And it is going to block any sort of hemolysis from occurring. White blood cells are not going to be able to get to uh, the red blood cell because they're not going to be able to see uh, the red blood cells being coated or the fetal uh, uh, system being coated. That is what prevents this hemolysis from occurring, and that's why we give them Rogam. Very high yield, very, very important to understand what is happening. Essentially, this is an IgG. This is an antibody you're giving to prevent maternal antibodies binding to fetal red blood cells. So that is uh, usually given in the third trimester to RH positive, uh, sorry, RH negative mothers who have already had an RH positive child. If they've already had an RH positive child, any subsequent pregnancies, they have to be given Rogam in the third trimester. When it comes to ABO hemolytic disease, this is usually caused by uh, the same mechanism in utero maternal blood exchange with the fetus, but essentially what's happening is you're going to have a type O mother with a fetus who is either A, type B, or type AB. The mechanism for this is that the mother is going to have pre-existing maternal anti-A and anti-B IgGs across the placenta. Keep in mind, this is a type O mother, and the type O mother is going to have uh, anti-B, anti-A, and anti-B IgG that crosses the placenta. And this can lead to inflammation in the fetus. So when it comes to presentation, you're still going to see mild jaundice within 24 hours of birth. You will see kernicterus due to the increased bilirubin that's occurring due to the hemolysis. And you will see mild hemolytic anemia. What you will not see is uh, high drops fatalis. So there's going to be no high drops fatalis occurring in this state. Okay, that's why we say that the RH positive, uh, the RH hemolytic disease of a newborn is much more severe than the ABO hemolytic disease of the newborn, especially when it comes to severity in a severe case. And when it comes to the ABO hemolytic disease, uh, treating these patients is pretty straightforward. Essentially, once they're born, those antibodies, those maternal antibodies will be removed from circulation eventually. But what you want to do is prevent any other uh, adverse effects to the child and you can do that via phototherapy and exchange transfusion. The phototherapy is going to get rid of the bilirubin, okay, it's going to turn it into biliverdin and get it out of the, sorry, it's going to turn it into lumiverdin and get it out of the body and prevent it from having any adverse effects in uh, uh, the baby. Essentially, that is what is happening in the ABO hemolytic disease. It is a much more, uh, sorry, it is a much less severe form of the RH hemolytic disease. And with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you guys want us to cover a specific topic, let us know. You can follow us on our social media accounts right here. And you can find these lectures on your favorite podcast service for free. Just search Mad Medicine and we'll pop up.